Greetings. In this video, we will create this cube shape with six pipes, and we can use this as a receptacle for our ball joint, and we can uh, export this piece and add it to our library of shapes and use it in a variety of applications. I'm going to begin with our existing leg, and if you have your unrigged uh, geometry, that's where you should start. I'm going to go ahead and work from the rigged version just to review taking uh, rigs apart and putting them back together, repositioning. So you should be working from your unrigged version. I'm going to go ahead and work from my rigged version just as a review. I'm going to grab this rear piece as we get started now and we'll come to edit duplicate and I'm going to slide this back. Now because I'm working from the rigged version, I need to unparent this. If I hide the layer or if we were to do anything, this is parented in. So with that selected in object mode, we'll come to Edit Unparent. Edit Unparent, or you could hit Shift P for capital P. Now uh, it's disassociated from the rig. I can see here in my outliner that it's uh, no longer associated with the joint chain. And uh, I can also hide my layer without that disappearing. I'll hit the F key and we'll dolly around to the back. We'll hit the 1 key. And you may be familiar with this technique. We're just going to extract the rear of this piece. So, and we'll use that as a starting point for the basis of our new cube. I'm hitting the shift more then, and we're getting all of the pieces up to this flat part. Uh, note that I, if I'd gone one more, if I hit shift more than one more, now I'm into the bevel. We don't want to be into the bevel, so I'm going to hit shift less than now to reduce that. Shift more than to expand a component selection. Shift less than to reduce a component selection. Now we'll come to Edit Mesh Extract. So just take a look there. Make sure you have the proper face selection. Edit Mesh Extract. And then we'll delete this uh, part of the uh, rear shoe. And we're left with this uh, pipe. Now uh, we want to position the pivot here. Remember that repositioning the pivot, we'll just tap the D key. And we're doing this in Omni mode, so I can see all three colors, green, red, and blue. V key, as in Victor, and middle mouse button click, and snap that right to the middle there. And then we'll tap the D key to get out of that. I'm going to uh, hold down the X key in my middle mouse button just to put that right on the origin. So now we've got our uh, new piece right on the origin with the pivot centered there. And we're going to jump into the front view and we're going to make this our standard four unit square. Remember that we can pick a vertex and then with our X key middle mouse button, just uh, click drag on the area we want to snap to. Um, so selecting the vertex, X key middle mouse button, vertex, X key middle mouse button. And it's always best, or, or typically it's best to click on what you want to snap to rather than to drag. So X key middle mouse button, click drag, and we've got our four unit square shape. Now I'm going to jump into the top view, note the origin, so this is the origin, and then I'm going to grid snap two units in the positive Z, uh, oh excuse me, in the negative Z in this case. So we've moved it two units in the negative Z. Here is the origin, and we've moved that up. Let's take a look just in the uh, perspective view. And just to note, once again, that's the positive Z direction. So we're going to mirror in that direction. We're going to come with this selected in object mode, mesh, mirror, and we'll open the dialog box. And we'll choose Z, and mirror direction is positive. Right? We see that blue arrow there. And we'll hit mirror. And now we've got it on the other side, which will be uh, eventually be the other side of our cube. I'm going to right-click, choose object, and then click off, and then just click back on, and we'll see that the pivot point, right, that is where we'd set it. And we want to center it, so we're going to come to Modify Center Pivot. So with this shape as it exists currently, selected in object mode, we're coming to Modify Center Pivot, and that puts it right at the origin. And now we can duplicate this, Edit, Duplicate, Select it as an object with the pivot in the middle. And then we can use the J key, rotate, or you could just type in 90 on the Y. And we'll do that a second time. Edit, duplicate. And we'll hold down the J key and rotate that up. Or you could put uh, 90 on the X. 
And so there is our shape. Now, these are three independent shapes, and so we'll grab all of them. We'll come to the modeling toolkit, and we'll hit combine. And then we know that those uh, vertexes aren't welded or merged, and so we'll come to uh, edit mesh. Uh, excuse me, we need to select the vertexes first. We'll grab all those vertexes, and we'll come to edit mesh merge. Edit mesh merge. So that should be a familiar workflow to you using uh, in the object mode using combine and then right clicking to vertex selecting all the vertexes and hitting edit mesh uh, merge you can hit the three key and you can see that that's uh if if you like that rounded shape you could keep that i'm going to bevel it once though so uh just going to double click uh, all of our corner edges and i'll do the top one and then let's do the bottom one make it a little bit easier to track right so we've got the top square let's hide our grid and then we'll get the four corners and so just a real standard uh, corner selection there and we'll hit bevel and I'm going to reduce that and uh, let's say to 0.2 and I'm going to leave the well no let's do the segments to 0.2 as well just so that we're quadded all the way around and we'll hit the three key and we have a real nice shape what you'll want to do is export that to your library of shapes. In the next section of the video, uh, we'll talk about some of the ways that we can use this uh, in the course of our robot build. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we proceed, let's delete all of our history. We'll bring back our leg, and we'll use this newly generated piece as a starting point for our pelvis. So we'll grid snap this up. And you can take a look there, and that serves as our pelvis for our robot. We're going to create a series of these shapes with these ball joints in between, but we're going to make a second uh, shape like this one that will fit for our spine. So we'll come to polys, and we'll create a sphere. Let's go ahead and grid snap this up into position. And then in the inputs, we'll make the subdivisions 10 and 10 since we're going to subdivide it once, and once we do that, it will be back to 20. And it's uh, penetrating that surface, so let's make it a little bit smaller. And then we'll duplicate this, and we'll grid snap it up two units, and then we'll delete the bottom pole of faces, hit delete there, and the top pole on this one, draw a bounding box and hit delete, We'll select both of these in object mode. We'll come into the modeling toolkit. We'll hit combine. And then we'll double click this edge, shift double click this edge, and hit bridge. And you can see we have our ball joint piece. We're going to create a series of these. And um, this length is going to be a little bit longer in proportion to this leg. So as often as the case when we're experimenting, in other words, we're, we're experimenting and building and rigging as we go, we're not working from a reference. And so oftentimes you'll rig and then have to uh, take the rig apart to be able to reposition. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to select my joint chain and you know that if I just hit delete, all of that subordinate geometry disappears. I'll hold down the shift key and click the little plus next to joint we want only the poly meshes. You can manually select those, use the command key to skip select. But it's a little bit easier if you just say show none, show polys, and then we draw a bounding box and it, uh, right, it didn't select the joints because joints aren't in our view currently. So we only had those surfaces. And now we can conveniently come to edit unparent or shift P on your keyboard and you see that they all jump down here away. They've been disassociated, uh, unparented from this joint chain. Now we can select that root joint and just hit delete. Uh, I'm going to undo that. Let's do that with everything on. You can just hit delete and you see that goes away, but our geometry is left. Then I also had a foot IK group and we'll delete that as well. Now I want to make, uh, the reason we did that is because I want to make my leg a little bit longer uh, as you may find yourself in a similar circumstance. I'm going to actually make this six units so uh, taller. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the length 
uh, of this new leg with the new reposition. And I'll grid snap that up. We'll grid snap that up. We'll grab the three pieces of the knee and we'll grid snap that to be right in between. So we, we've got a gap uh, here of uh, just under two units and a gap here of just under two units. So let's create a pipe shape and that will kind of reinforce that. I think aesthetically or visually uh, this is going to be helpful. We're going to make our subdivisions 12 and we'll make our thickness 0.25 and in order to fit that existing peg we'll make this 0.75 and then on the Y, let's say 2.5, and that should fit nicely. Let's grid snap this over and just take a look. We'll hit the F key, and that does fit. Um, let's see. Yeah, so when we uh, eventually subdivide that, and we can, yeah, let's go ahead and bevel that bottom. So we'll hit bevel, and now that fits. And we'll duplicate that and we'll just flip it upside down for the top part. So we'll Command D, grid snap that up, and then we'll hold down the J key and just flip that over so that we see that bevel. And that's fitting nicely. So here we extended, extended the leg. And right, we can put additional pieces if you want to create uh, thickness here. Um, but we're creating really the skeleton that some more sophisticated or more interesting shapes can sit on top of. Now let's duplicate uh, our spine. We're going to have four of these, and so we'll just do it one at a time. We'll duplicate, and we'll grid snap that up to fit. Duplicate this one, and we'll just keep going. You could use the duplicate dialog box uh, if you wanted. That would be probably more efficient. And here are the four pieces of our spine. We'll say this is our pelvis, uh, lower torso, upper torso, and head. And we'll parent some pieces on there to make that look a little more humanoid-like. But that is where we will leave off for now. We'll come back in the next section and uh, duplicate the leg to create an arm. Be right back. Welcome back. Let's get started on our arm. We'll begin with a standard sphere, and we'll just leave this one at 20 and 20 subdivisions because we won't be smoothing it. And we're going to place it half a unit off the grid. So this is going to be 3.5 on the X. And we'll duplicate our cube piece, and we'll grid snap this out. And so that's how we'll build out the shoulder. And we'll duplicate this piece and grid snap this out here. And then we're going to grab all the pieces of the leg. We're going to recycle the leg for the arm and we'll make some adjustments. But in order to position this, we're going to go to Edit, Duplicate, and then immediately group it, Edit, Group, and then come to Modify Center Pivot. And this will allow us to position it uniformly. So we'll grid snap that up. And we'll have our leg and arm flared, but we're working uh, just straight up and down in world space. We can take a look at that here in the perspective view. And the arm is a little bit long, and so we can uh, grid snap these up. So let's grid snap that up. Let's say two units. We'll grab the mechanism there, grid snap that two units. And then we can grab all of these and move these up two units. So something about there, and you can decide how you want to finish off that. If your hand was going to be very large, you might want to make this uh, even shorter. In fact, let's anticipate a hand. So let's move this up just one more unit. Uh, we'll move everything up one more unit. Could have done that elbow at once, but we've got this here. But you can make the adjustment. So that is about right if we put a hand shape in there. And again, this will be flared out, but we're just working in world space. And you can begin to experiment with placement of your other items. If you have other items in your library that you would like to import and place, you can do that. Uh, we've got this piece on the shoe that we'll recycle here. I'm going to jump into the front view and we'll grid snap that up. 
we can use the J key, right? We'll rotate that over, J key. Actually, I got that upside down. We wanted something like that. And we're working to the grid, so we can grid snap that. We can duplicate it, grid snap it over. And we'll just place a series of these. Now, you can do something more custom. Uh, if you've been working on the rest of your shapes, you can use those. Uh, maybe, oops, and we can see, we'll grid snap those back. So I'm going to take a second and place a variety of shapes and then we'll duplicate over onto the other side and create our final skeleton for the project. Okay, be right back. Welcome back. I uh, had some fun positioning these shapes and I realized I'd like the um, hips to be a little bit more robust. So we'll raise it, we'll raise it one more time. Let's clean up our outliner before we continue though. We'll come to edit delete all by type history. That means we can get rid of those two transform nodes and then we just have the one group of the arm that we will now ungroup. So if you look at your outliner it's just all polygonal meshes and we'll create some temporary groups just for placement. First we'll raise this up a couple of units. So I'm going to grab everything that I've got so far. I'll use the control key to deselect the leg. So I've just got all of the upper body, none of the leg and we'll come and we'll group this. This will just be a temporary group. And uh, I'm going to raise it up, let's say two units. One, two, I think that's about right. And then I'm going to actually delete this one and we'll, we'll duplicate this. And this is going to be a half unit. So we're gonna make this 3.5. I'm going to imagine that this doesn't articulate uh, but it's more uh, using it as a bracket. I'm going to grab all the pieces of the leg, uh, not the uh, hand there, and we'll group these just as a temporary measure. I'm just going to grid snap that out of the way for a moment. I'm going to duplicate that, and we'll grid snap this over something like that. Now, the arm is going to penetrate, but we're going to have the arm flare out eventually. So if we have some penetration here, that will be okay. We'll come back to this group, make sure that you select it uh, on the group head. Right? If we pick it interactively, we just get the selection. You could hit the up arrow. And then we'll grid snap that over. And I can see I want this to be even a little bit taller. So before we move that back, uh, let's grab this group, which contains everything. It looks like two more units. We'll come back and grab this group. And we'll grid snap it. Nope, let's do this just in place. We'll grid snap that. And I want to have a sphere here. So we'll create our sphere, grid snap that up, and we'll imagine that's what our leg mechanism looks like. Uh, actually, yeah, let's do this one more unit. And then that will allow us to duplicate one of these to place here. So that looks a little more proportion, although it is, you know, kind of a funny character, but we've got the length of the arm and the leg. And of course you can thicken that leg with additional shapes to make that seem a little bit more robust. But I'm going to say that's okay, just for demonstration purposes. The way that we uh, de-rigged, took our rig apart, the way that we've been changing the length of the limbs, changing the length of the overall shape, I think it's helpful uh, for you to go through that process of experimentation. Now let's ungroup everything. We'll say ungroup and ungroup. We're back to just our shapes. And now we're ready to create a proper group for duplicating uh, over the axis. I'm going to grab uh, all of these pieces here and I'll manually select those. And we've got one half of the head as well. We'll come to group and then we'll open the duplicate special dialog box and put a negative one in the scale. When we grouped it, it gave us a pivot at the origin. And so we can flip uh, just on that one axis by putting a negative one in the scale. And then we'll do the same thing on the leg. Make sure you have only the leg pieces. We'll say edit group. And then we've already got the duplicate special, but you can just verify that scale negative one and we'll hit duplicate special over there. 
and we've got all of our pieces in place on the grid and now we're ready to uh, create our joint chains for our skeleton and we'll do that in the final section of the video next be right back welcome back let's clean up our outliner we'll come to edit delete all by type history that will allow us to delete those two transform nodes and then we'll ungroup that arm that was just temporary so we could place all of those together so we'll hit edit ungroup and we currently just have all of our uh, poly meshes no transform nodes uh, no groups and that will allow us to just grab everything on one side make sure you've got a clean selection uh, and I can see I also need to grab that sphere there and we'll come and we'll group again just temporarily that gives us a pivot at the origin and we can then open the duplicate special dialog box put a negative one in the X scale and then when we hit duplicate we've got it mirrored onto the other side as independent shapes we'll select both these groups and we'll say edit ungroup and now we're back to having all of our pieces uh, independently now we were very careful to lay everything out on the grid and there's one exception it's this sphere here remember that that was three and a half units if we were to look at it uh, let's hit the four key and get in here you can see that it's it's not on a grid it's our only piece that isn't on a grid and if that happens to you if you have some pieces what you'll want to do is just come and turn on a handle for it so we'll come to display transform display selection handles and now we can uh, snap a joint there all of our other joints will snap to the grid but I wanted to have an example of where you may have an object that isn't exactly on the grid and that's what you would want to do let's go ahead and begin uh, our joint chain we'll hit the 5 key and I'm going to come up to x-ray so this icon here we'll come into the rigging mode and we'll open the skeleton create joints dialog box and we'll make sure that orient joint to world is on even though we're grid snapping uh, this will be a fail safe we want to have all of our joints uh, in world space and then we can position the robot after we've uh, laid down all of our joints conveniently using the grid and our one handle so we'll come down here and we'll click on uh, make sure my joints are on and we'll uh, click that joint right there and on each of the two spheres so we'll grid snap grid snap and then grid snap grid snap and then grid snap grid snap and so that is our joint chain we can uh, hold off on the polys uh, and you can see root two spheres two spheres two spheres and return when we're done as long as our surfaces are off let's go ahead and lay down the first shoulder joint so we'll grid snap that oops not grid snap excuse me uh, V snap so we V snap to vertex snap to that handle and then we can bring our polys back and now uh, I said X a moment ago when I meant V in the habit of saying X because that's what we're using uh, for everything else so we'll grid snap that we'll grid snap down to the elbow down to the wrist and then we'll just come to the center of the hand and we'll hit return and you can see that there we'll do the same for the leg we'll uh, grid snap oops grab our joint tool grid snap to the knee to the ankle we'll jump to the side view and we'll grid snap and then if we wanted to get that exact we'll hit return when we're done click off uh, we'll look at this in one mode and if I wanted to get this exactly on the toe we could uh, right we can just move that out and then V snap to that edge or you could C snap or V snap it will choose uh, either one and then we've got the leg chain arm chain and pelvis chain if we hide our polys you can see those our hip is going to come into the pelvis lowercase p we uh, let me do that we pick the pelvis first uh, uh, the hip first shift selected the pelvis and lowercase p hip first shift select pelvis shoulder or our extended shoulder and then uh, actually let's turn this handle off uh, just so that we don't accidentally select it so I'm going to select that 
and we'll turn off our one handle that we use to snap to. And then we'll parent this uh, to this joint here, lowercase p. Now, uh, having done that, we can pick our shoulder, don't select it here, pick it out at the shoulder, and we can come to skeleton mirror joints. We'll open that dialog box. And YZ, right, we've been modeling Z forward. Our dialog box default is predicated on Z forward, and we'll hit mirror. We'll grab the hip, right, not the pelvis, but the hip, and we'll come to mirror joints. And now we have everything ready to be parented in. So you would certainly want to increment and save potential for mistakes as we're parenting. So you want to have a saved, clean version that you can revert to uh, in case you make a mistake. So we'll be right back and we'll parent it all in. Welcome back. When we're parenting, uh, you know that we will use our two side by side. We'll make them both perspective. And in one view, we'll say show none, show only joints. And in another view, we'll say show none, show polys. Show none, show polys. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my grid in each of those. Let's start with the center. We'll grab all the pieces of the head. And that will go to that joint, lowercase p. And then our, our ball joints are going to go to the second of the two, so we'll lowercase p. And so you can just test that, right? Our head can move around, but we've also got this, this double joint that we can move. So the head can move around that top sphere, and then the bottom sphere can serve as a ball joint. We'll grab this piece, and right, it's, we'll just go down the chain, lowercase p. The double sphere uh, will go to the bottom of the two joints. We'll grab this piece. Lowercase p, we'll grab the two spheres, goes to the bottom, lowercase p. And then our pelvis uh, will go right into the pelvis. And if we want to grab all of those joints just to test, uh, we'll leave the uh, pelvis joint alone. And you can see that rotates and give us a, gives us a nice, uh, nice bend uh, to a spine. Now we'll come out and all of these pieces... Right, so this sphere, this piece would go if you don't have a joint out here for it to articulate. And we'll grab all of those. So one looks like, yeah. Now these are penetrating, but we're going to uh, rotate the arm up, so don't worry about that. Uh, and then this is just kind of free floating if you wanted to have built a mechanism in, you could. Uh, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, and that's all going to go to this joint here, lowercase p. And as I mentioned a moment ago, that's going to articulate kind of upward like that. We'll grab the pieces of the upper arm, right? And the upper arm includes that piece there. And shift select the shoulder, lowercase p. We'll come down and grab these pieces. And that's going to go to the elbow, lowercase p, and we can just check these if you want to just check those two so far. So that's working. Then this, yeah, this piece is going to come here, and we put that in the middle, so actually this will also go here. We gave ourselves a terminal joint. There's actually nothing going to be parented on there. So that works that way, and you can select all three and just test. And you see that that's working fine. We'll come, this is going to be on the pelvis. We could have parented that at the same time, so it's on the pelvis joint. And then we'll grab the pieces of our leg, including that piece. We'll hit that hip joint, lowercase p. Oops. We'll grab the pieces of the lower leg, and they go to the knee, lowercase p, and the two pieces of our foot. And if we want to grab those three joints, we can. And that works nicely. And then we're just going to repeat the process on the other side. Unfortunately, uh, there is no way to mirror our parent positions. But it'll go quick, right? We know exactly what we're parenting. And so this will go fast. We, uh, using the control key to deselect, 
Shift key to add a selection. That's the clean selection there. That little double ball goes to the pelvis. We can grab, we remember that these two pieces come to the wrist joint. We don't have anything parented to that terminal joint. We'll grab those three pieces to the elbow. And then these four pieces to the shoulder. And then we can remember that all of these pieces go to this second shoulder joint and we can test. So this rotates up. You know what, I don't know if I wanted those there, but this, this may be good. So that's gonna rotate up. I'm actually gonna parent those off, but uh, we'll grab these just to test. That works good. Okay, so everything is working. I don't want these. Did I do that on that side? Yeah, I sure did. You, you could have those there if you wanted, but I think I want them on this piece here. So uh, good to see if you made a incorrect. We'll select those and we're gonna unparent. And then I want them there. Yeah, that's the one I want. So I want these two pieces. My mouse, there we go. Those two and we want it there, lowercase p. There we go. So now we can articulate that arm without affecting that. There we go. Okay, and then you can articulate, uh, uh, pose your character, or you can jump in and create the uh, double IK mechanism uh, with a pull vector constraint for the leg. All right, uh, questions in the discussion forum. Have a good one.